morning. You're looking good this morning and good looking too. So that, that works out real well. All right. And, and I know we got a lot going on today and it's special, but it is the Lord's day and it's the day that we remember him above all else. So let's uh, bow our heads together as we prepare our hearts to worship. Our Heavenly Father, we stop and thank you for this beautiful day you've given us and for a privilege to come together, to worship together, to sit at your table, to remember a body that was so lovingly broken for us and the blood that was shed that we might have life and have it abundantly. And so, Father, above all else that happens in this day, let us see Jesus. Let us see him in his realness. Let us see him in his loveliness. Let us see him in his holiness. Let us see him in his saving power and his redeeming power to make us what we ought to be. So, Father, change us, and may we leave this place more like Jesus than when we come in. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to sing together a special song this morning. Okay? Nothing but the blood. And we will have a part that will be sung by uh, a couple of folks who's going to sing it for us. And then we're going to respond. So if you see Yella in the music, then uh, we, we sing together. Okay? Okay, you ready? What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I Today is a very special day. It's a day that we set aside to keep the commandments of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection, to remember that he gave a body to be broken and blood to be shed. And so let us take this time as we worship together to examine ourselves, to look in deep, and above all else, Fix our eyes upon he who gave himself for us. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here today. It's great to have a full house. 
uh, in here. And uh, uh, we're just going to go over some announcements and uh, have some prayer time here um, before the, um, uh, the next song and the, our tithes and offerings and things. So, um, but first, um, announcements that are going on. Um, uh, does anybody have an announcement that's not in the bulletin? The bulletin, by the way, just for those of you who are, uh, who are visiting or new, in the bulletin we have a list of announcements here. Um, we're not going to go over all of those. You guys can read them. But um, if there's anything in addition to that that anybody would like to mention? Okay, of course, um, the, the first announcement is um, today after the service. So today we're going to uh, um, share communion together. But after that, uh, we're going to have a fellowship dinner, as we often do pretty much every first Sunday of the month. And um, whether you brought any food or not, you are more than welcome. Please join us. Okay, If you're here just visiting, um, please join us afterwards. We're going to have burgers and hot dogs, and there's plenty of food. Um, everyone is welcome. Okay, so please don't think like, oh gosh, I didn't bring anything, uh, I can't stay. Please, we want you to be with us uh, for that time of fellowship, uh, which will come right after the service today. Okay, It's kind of a you know, Labor Day weekend, end of the summer picnic type ideas, uh, sort of the idea here. Okay, Just uh, essentially a cookout here with uh, friends and family of Rutgersville Baptist Church. So it's great to have you guys. Um, other announcements? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Um, so let's go to our scripture reading. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, there was another. Sorry that I forgot. That's, that's why I'm asking because I forget. Um, so one thing John uh, Underwood is our uh, camera guru and, uh, and, and computer guru and all things uh, technical guru. And anyway, uh, later in the service, uh, since we're a full house here, um, he would like to come around and, and sort of just pan around with his camera and take some photos. Let's uh, go to the word. Okay. Our scripture passage this morning is from Revelation. Going to the book of Revelation, chapter 7. We will have, uh, we'll have some uh, of the words up on the screen. They are, the ones that we use on the screen are from the King James Version. Um, I'll be reading from the NIV, so if things don't match up exactly, but uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty close. So This is um, uh, where John is referring to, uh, God, the Apostle John is referring to the great multitude uh, as he's talking about this in uh, chapter 7. Okay, beginning with verse 9. After this... I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne. And in front of the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Then one of the elders asked, ask me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Um, powerful, powerful stuff. And of course all uh, related to our lamb, 
Uh, we sang nothing but the blood uh, this morning. And, uh, of course, here the blood, uh, ironically, is what washed those, uh, that tr- those, those uh, multitude from the tribulation. It washed their robes white as snow. Uh, again, uh, one of the ironic things about Jesus' love and his sacrifice is that he washes us white as snow with blood. Uh, anyway, uh, always gives me shivers when I think about it. Um, right now, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we have, as we do with announcements in the bulletin, we also have prayer concerns listed. And uh, uh, it's a relatively long list uh, of folks here. And, uh, and it's great. It's, it's wonderful for us to have the opportunity to be able to lift one another up in prayer. And, uh, and we want to include those uh, in our thoughts as we do so. We won't include them by name today. Uh, but if there's anyone else or any other prayer concern that's not on the list, Maxine. My sister-in-law is going to have her baby. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Mom and, and soon-to-be baby. Uh, that's, that's great. Others? One uh, praise, uh, I believe, that we have for Marianne uh, Berger. We've been keeping her in our prayers. Uh, she's still in the hospital at uh, UVA, but uh, she had her heart surgery, went, went, went well, and then she had her surgery on her knee this past week. Uh, things are going well, Wayne reported. Uh, she is uh, in good spirits and now just awaiting the time that she's going to be sent to rehab. So she'll be going to a rehab facility uh, sometime uh, soon, but they don't know for sure. She's still at UVA right now. Chase. I have a phrase. Last week I spoke about Robert's aunt, uncle, Hank, and Heather Taylor, um, baby being up, and then Nick, uh, Thankfully, he's out of that now. He's still at the UVA hospital for another few days, but they do expect him to be going home pretty soon. That's awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Others. Pat. I'm sure they are. Okay, gotcha. Others? Justin? Yeah, uh, my dad is having quite a few more uh, health complications, like multiple infections, and there's and things like that. They have to have a minor surgery. Well, yeah, it's my dad's health uh, and also his, uh, his soul for salvation. Gotcha, gotcha, absolutely. Bill. Any others? Um, praise in my, of my own, uh, I had uh, lifted my sister up last week. Uh, she was in the hospital. Uh, she's still awaiting surgery, but uh, she, she did start to progress. Um, she had been uh, in the hospital for a week um, with basically no change. Um, and they were, you know, they, they did some tests and figured she had this blockage. Um, um, I lifted her up last Sunday. On Monday, uh, they said, hey, she's starting to show some improvement. And, uh, you know, they, they don't see the coincidence there, and I don't either. I see the power of prayer. And uh, so I think Wayne mentioned this last week, but, you know, well, Annie and I have been in stores recently. We were just in a grocery store the other day. And, um, and you know, we're seeing this, that, and the other shelves that are not stocked and things that are... Mm, you know, in disarray and all this, and we're, we're, we're often thinking to ourselves, man, I really wish we could talk to whoever's in charge around here. Um, well, the great thing about prayer, we get to talk to the one who's in charge Amen. directly, okay? We don't have to wait. We don't have to make a call through customer service. I mean, we have a direct line to the one who's in charge, and uh, so uh, this is a wonderful privilege and an opportunity we have uh, at our disposal whenever we need it, and so uh, it is a privilege. Sorry, was there another hand about a prayer concern? Yes. Um, 
Sure, her and her husband. Gotcha. Sure, sure. Sounds serious. Okay, let's go to the Lord. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this direct connection we have, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity and privilege of prayer. Thank you for making that available to us. Uh, We thank you, Lord, for being in charge. And uh, we know, Lord, that you are bombarded with prayer requests uh, from all corners, from all uh, voices, uh, from all thoughts and all hearts. And yet, you understand all, Lord, and see all and know all, and are able to uh, step into every situation, Lord, um, with your love and your care. And uh, we thank you so much for that. We ask you, please, uh, Lord, to have your healing hands on the situations that you've uh, listened to this morning, that we've had raised up to you, Lord. Um, uh, New babies about to be born, and uh, others at the other end of life who have lost loved ones, Lord, uh, and are feeling in uh, need of your comfort and your peace. Uh, Please be with those hearts, Lord, and offer them that. Uh, Wrap them up, Lord, and, and, uh, and in your wings and just take care of them. Um, All those, Lord, who are experiencing illness or injury or physical ailments of one kind or another and need uh, the healing touch, Lord, we ask you please to heal them according to your will. Be with those health care providers, those nurses and doctors and uh, therapists and everyone that's involved. Please be with them all, Lord, and touch them in the way that they need uh, to be touched. We, We thank you, Lord, for always being there, and we thank you for responding to our prayers, Lord, uh, sometimes not in the way we would hope, but, uh, but always in the way that is right, Lord, always uh, according to your will, and we ask that from you uh, for all of these prayer requests. Right now, Lord, we ask you to be with us in the rest of this service. Please open our hearts and our minds. Uh, please help us, Lord, to shake off all those distractions, all those things that are in our brain uh, from elsewhere, those things that are not you, Lord, uh, help us to put those away and focus on you, Lord. Help us to see you and hear you, Lord. Please help us to shake our ears loose and, uh, and open up so that we can listen to your voice, which is going to be presented to us today, Lord. Uh, We ask you to be with our messenger today. Please be with Pastor Mark as he delivers your message, Lord. And please be with us and help us again to open ourselves up and hear that, Lord, and respond uh, to the message you have for us. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, sing and raise praises to you, Lord, and worship you together in this place. Uh, We thank you for everyone that's here. We thank you for the opportunity to fellowship together uh, afterwards and just enjoy our company and good food and, uh, and just all of the privileges of, uh, of love and life and joy uh, that are possible because of you and because of your son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are going to, oh, we're going to have another hymn right now. Here's Wilbur. Please stand as we sing hymn number 224.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for today we have a song which talks about, uh, Lord, I need you. We all need our Lord. Amen? Amen. We know, many times I think, you know, it's, um, we knowingly ignore just or, you know, put, uh, keep our Lord aside and do our activities. We don't invite Lord in our lives. We, don't, we act in such a way that, you know, we don't need you, we only need you when we need you. So, but this song reminds us that we need him all the time and every hour we need him. So let's uh, listen to this song uh, meaningfully and praise the Lord.
folks, I didn't write this book, okay? I'll just read it. Mark, together, as we read, it says this, and starting with verse 22, and they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it, and gave it to them and said, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. It is indeed a special privilege that we have to take the Lord's Supper. It is a family meal, and you are part of our family. Amen. The family of God, those who have been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're not part of the family, we want you this morning to make him a part of your family and a part of your heart. For he said, if, if you will just open up your heart's door, I, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. So if God is supping with you, then we want to also share with you at the Lord's table. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus chose something to represent the great gift that he's given to humanity, that he simply took a piece of bread and broke it and blessed it 
and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Now, it's interesting that he said, This is my body, which is broken for you, and he thanked God for it. Of all the things that we have to be thankful for, not just that Jesus came, not just that he is the Son of God, but the reality that he was willing to allow that body to be broken for him. And why would he use bread? Well, first of all, bread is, is the most common food throughout all the centuries and all the people. It really started in the Garden of Eden. Remember when Jesus had, had or when God had come to talk to Adam and, and he was addressing the fact of their sin and he said to Adam, by the sweat of your brow, you'll earn your bread, your bread. And I, I know that it, it has to do with all that we eat and all that we hold precious. But also understand that bread is that universal thing. It's very common. It's very commonplace. Most of you had bread this morning, right? Some of you had toast or muffins, maybe biscuits and gravy. And by the way, that's two breads, <laughs> right? And, 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 you know, we make bread out of so many things. It's not what it's made out of that's important. It's the substance that we have in it. Now, you've all heard of zucchini bread and pumpkin bread and, and pumpernickel and all kinds of different breads. But they all have one thing in common. And that is they have to be destroyed before they can be eaten. Now, some of you had wheat bread this morning, right? How many of you had a kernel of wheat in it? Even if it says whole wheat, they're, they're lying to you. It just means the whole wheat's in there, but they grind it up first. It's broken. It's pulverized. It's broke down. If you look at the picture of Jesus as he is going through the crucif crucifixion, you see a body that was broken and beaten and, and put through the, the grist mill, if you please, as it's torn apart. It was by reeds that they smote his body. And the Bible says that he was whipped. In for order, they said to let him go, but then they crucified him also. Isaiah said, by his stripes we're healed. And yes, that healing is a part of God. And those stripes are for our healing. And let me say this to you, first of all. I believe with all my might that the God who created these bodies we live in has the power to restore them and to heal them when the doctors have no way. I believe that with all my might. And yes, I believe that that power is, is appropriated from the fact that Jesus died for us and rose again. But let me say something to you. The healing that it speaks of is more than just physical healing. You see, if my body was healed till I could live a thousand years, but if the sin-sick soul of mine is never healed, I have gained nothing. I've gained nothing. But I'm so thankful that those stripes that's on the back of Christ also heals me from that great disease of sin that causes all the death and all the corruption that's in this world. And let me say that those stripes are very precious. The Bible speaks often of bread in the Old Testament. I already mentioned Genesis and it was at that time after God had slain the animals and taken the skin and covered their bodies. Do you understand that there is a clothing that comes for the Christ? And it's a clothing not just of garments that we wear in this world to cover our bodies. But it's that garment that will make us fit into heaven's presence. Have you ever been to a place where you felt like you was out of place because of what you wore? Everybody else thought dress up and you thought casual. You know, you showed up and something wasn't right. One would say to you, you can't get in heaven without the perfect garments. Right? And the good news is you don't have to provide them. Because he will cause us to be dressed in his righteousness. We read in the devotional part about the fact that they are there who's had their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. And so it is true that through Christ we have clothing for who we are. The next place that I wish to call your attention to in the Bible was the Passover. 
And you know, the, the Passover, we, we all talk about the blood, and we will a little bit later on. But, but do you know it also included bread and leavened bread? Why? For strength for the journey. You see, what Christ does for us is not just get us into heaven. But it's also to give us strength to live in this world in a way that pleases him. It is our daily needs. Now, don't misunderstand me when I'm saying this, but understand that God will provide for our daily needs. When Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, what? Father, give us this day our daily bread. Sustain us for what we need. You see, as, as children of God, we're called upon to depend upon God for everything that we have and everything that we need. Each and every bite of food that we take is a gift from above. He gives us the power to get wealth. He gives us the power to work. He gives us the light of another day. And so day by day, he sustains us. But it's not only a sustaining bread, but it is also a living bread. Remember the children of Israel when they was in the wilderness? And uh, I don't know, they must have been like some of us. They weren't there very long until they started complaining about the food situation. You know, there's not enough food to go around, and we're getting kind of tired of what you're feeding us, Moses, and we're going to starve to death out here. And God sent manna from above. And we've all heard the story of manna. And we know that, that God miraculously provided for them food for the journey. And it was a very special food. It was, it, it, it come from above. That is, it spoke of Christ's deity. It lay on the ground, it spoke of his humility. But it was white and it spoke of his holiness and his purity. But it was God food. It was angel food. It was provided by God. And isn't it amazing that it wasn't very long until the children of Israel complained about it. And they said, you know, uh, we're, we're getting tired of this manna. After all, we have manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner. I mean, you know, manna, 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 manna. And well, Lord, we're, we're getting tired of it. And uh, if you know the story, then God sent quail. Right? But you know what it said about the quail? They ate it till it ran out their nostrils. In other words... We say to God, God, what you gave us wasn't, you know, we're tired of that. We want something else. We, we get tired of the same old thing over and over and over. Lord, give us something new. We, we want a new exciting thing. And be careful. Sometimes God will let you get it. It'll make you sick. Be content with what God provides. But you see, in John chapter 6, Jesus said to the Jews, Moses gave you manna, but it really was manna from God. But I'm the true bread that come from heaven. I am the living bread. And he that eateth of this bread will never hunger and never thirst. He said, Moses gave you temporary bread. And, and your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and died. But the bread I give you, you will live forever. So Christ said, that in this, when in giving his body, he gives a sustaining presence that not only lasts through this world, but the world to come. Now, I don't know. We're all getting a little bit nervous about the food supply, right? And everybody's saying, okay, you know, one of these days we, we may, not, may not be able to go to the store and get everything we want. And, and a few months ago in time, we'll go and get something and it's not there. Well, wouldn't it be nice if somebody could just say, I'll supply all the foods you ever need in your life, and you won't have to go to the grocery store again? I mean, I, I'd be tickled to just not have to go to the grocery store again. But, but think about that. Well, what Christ said is, I will give you substance that will take you all through this life and the life to come. It, it is a food that will never, ever run out. You know, some people worry about what we're going to eat in heaven. Who cares? I know one thing. We're going to have a marriage supper, and I'm going to sit down with him because I have a special inv invitation by the bridegroom who's Christ. Okay? So he said, I am the bread of life. If you want to live, you've got to eat. Right? 
Well, I want to say to you, if you want spiritual life, eternal life, you have to eat. But it's not of a special bread. It's not the bread that we'll pass out later. But it is taking Christ as he is, holy, into your heart and into your life. After Jesus told them he was the living bread, a lot of the people turned away and left him. And Jesus turned to his disciples and said, will you also go away? Will you also go away? And they said, to where will we turn? For thou hast the words of eternal life. And it is the words of Christ that sustains us. So I want to encourage you, eat a good diet for his word is bread indeed trust him and believe in all that he is but not only do we take the bread as you've done probably hundreds of times we take the cup and in that cup Jesus said this is the New Testament that is in my, in my blood that is shed for many blood I've been accused of spending too much time on that bloody subject of the blood. And some people would wipe it away, and some people would forget about it. But I want to say to you, there is no life apart from the blood. For the Bible says that there is no remission of sin apart from the blood of Christ. That means without the shedding of blood, we're yet in our sin. It's interesting from the very beginning, when men's sin against God became aware and apparent. In the Garden of Eden, when God said don't, and they did. And God said that when you do, you'll die where the wages of sin is death. But even in that garden, in all of the failure of mankind, God stepped in and said, I've made a provision that one will die in your place and will suffer the death and the separation from me for you. But it'll cost a price of blood. Because remember, they were hiding in the, in, the, in the garden, covered up with fig leaves, and that wasn't efficient until God slew an animal and took a skin and covered them. And then he could talk to them again. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, no covering, no answer for sin without the shedding of blood. So in the blood, our sins are covered. Isaiah said, though our sins be as crimson, they shall be white as snow. Do you know what you get if you have a red lens and shine a red light through it? What comes out the other side? White. Because all the color is taken out. Our sins be as crimson. But then when they're covered with the blood of Jesus, God doesn't see our sin, but he sees the sacrifice of his son. And all of our sins have been atoned. And then he sees us as he sees his son. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all, all sin. At the Passover, they were to slay a lamb. And then they would take the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lintel. And the reason for that was simply to say this. When the death angel passes through, he will pass over you. He'll skip your house and you will live. Friend, let me say this. When the blood of Christ is applied to our life, Yes, there's coming a day of judgment. There's a coming and end to the world. There's a day when God will judge all sin in this earth. 
But when the death angel passes by, when the blood is applied, he will pass over you. See, that's why they call it the Passover. They didn't say they didn't deserve to die. They didn't say that they were perfect. But when they saw the blood, they were spared the judgment to come. And we don't stand here today and say that we're not going to face the judgment of God because we're good. We're not going to stand here and say, you know, I've done so much for the Lord. He's going to accept me. All that's going to matter is I'm covered by the blood. And when the blood is applied, then I fear not the death angel anymore. Those wages has been paid. Yes, because of the blood, we have power, living power, to overcome daily, daily sin and problems of life. You see, we all talk about our problems, and we'll talk about, you know, this hurts, that hurts. We need this, we need that. But a real problem is not that. Our real problem is daily living a life that's pleasing to God, right? I mean, and that's, that's a real problem. That's what really matters. That's what's different. Well, I want to say to you, there is power in the blood. Amen. There is overcoming power in the blood of the Lamb. When it said, how did they come through great tribulation? Said, we overcome by the power of the blood. Now, let me ask you a question. Is there anything that you have to face and defeat in this world that the blood of Jesus Christ can't deliver you from? Because there is power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, I mentioned bread and how it's made. But think about how the wine is made. And let me say that we're using Old Testament terminology for wine. Not 1937 plus definition of wine. Because wine only meant an alcoholic drink during the probation. Before that, anything in the grape was called wine. You know what a fagot of wine is? A grape cake. Okay, that's your grape nuts. All right, there it is. But the wine has to go through a process from being a grape to being wine. And that is that grape has to be crushed and smashed and ground until all the juice and all that's there be poured out. The grape must be destroyed. Why is blood of Christ a symbol of our salvation? Because in giving his blood, he gave his life. A little back years ago when blood transfusions first come into knowledge that they could help, they knew that a brother could give brother blood and be safe. Anything else was a gamble. They didn't understand blood typing like we do today. And so it happens that a young man was injured very desperately, and the doctors knew he had to have blood. And he only had one brother, and he was a young fella. And they told him that they would need his blood to save his brother, and he readily gave it. And so they positioned him up here and the other brother down here and hooked it very much together. And while the boy was not afraid to start with, and he willingly accepted that he was going to give his blood for his brother, he didn't worry about the pain that was involved in putting the needles in. But as the process went on, he became very restless and very perturbed. And finally, someone said to him, Sonny, Sonny, what's wrong? He said, I just wonder when I'm going to die. When am I going to die? He was willing to give all his blood so his brother could live. Well, you know, he didn't have to die, right? But our elder brother, our elder brother, 
said, I'll give all my blood so that my bride, my brethren, might live. Jesus didn't hold back one drop in order that you could live. It started when they put thorns upon his head and his brow began to sweat. It really began in the garden when he was taking on your sin and was so anguished that he sweat his word drops of blood, the crown of thorns, and then the reeds as they beat his back. And when they plucked out his beard, yes, droplets and rivets of blood flowed down. And then he brought out this one. And the hide and skin from his back and exposed his blood. Then they took him to a cross and nailed him. To a cross. Maybe you've had a blood test and they prick your finger with a pen and there comes a drop of blood, right? Can you imagine what having a wrist riven with a nail and feet? Blood spill on that cross. But that wasn't enough. After he'd given up the ghost, after he'd died, to make sure they pierced his side and now flowed blood and water. And there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. When I was young, I used to dream of being a blood brother to an Indian. I don't know why, but that was just, well, you know, I'd read so many stories, I thought, man, that's great to be a blood brother to a Native American Indian. I'm gonna tell you something. I've got a blood brother. I've got one who shed his blood for me and is not ashamed to call me brother. He said, you're more than just friends. You're more than servants. But now I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ because he transferred his blood to my sin and paid the price for my life. Are you his blood brother? Are you his? How do you become? They asked Jesus. He said, do the will of my Father. What's the will of my Father? Believe in him who is sent. It's a faith in Jesus Christ that you believe what I say is not a fairy tale. It's a reality that Jesus Christ died for you. And you believe that that blood that's shed takes care of your sins. And you believe that he has the power to give you eternal life. You trust him as your savior. You see, he doesn't say you've got to act like me before you can be my brother. You know, let me tell you something. We can't act like him. We can only be made like him. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to give you new life, new hope, new reason for life. You know, as I said before, what we're about to do is to take a family meal. Okay? Wasn't it proper that we take time to give you an opportunity to join the family? To trust Christ as your Savior? Say, I believe that Jesus died and rose again. I know I'm a sinner. I know I don't deserve eternal life. But I know he promised to save me as I am. And I'm willing to trust him. And I believe he'll do what he said. I, I believe he'll take me home. I trust Jesus as my Savior. Just as simple as that. We invite you to come as we stand and sing in just a moment. Our Father and our God, let us see Jesus. You said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And Father, it's nothing that we can say. It's nothing we can do. 
It's no power or ability that we have, but only if they see Jesus, there's hope and there's life. So, Father, may your spirit draw. May your will be done. And Lord, let us give you the praise for every good and perfect thing, for it's yours. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand, as we sing, let this be the moment you trust Jesus. Would you come and trust him as we sing today? Hymn number 415, Room at the Cross.
three years of long
eating. Jesus took bread and break it and blessed it. He said to eat. This is my body which is broken for you. It's the remembrance.
Thank you for the precious time you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 